everyone, I'm Marissa Kobe. I have with me Eddie and Andy Robertson of Retail Arbitrage Academy. You can find their course in Amazing.com's Pro Membership. Thanks guys for being with me. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Cheers for having us. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about how you guys started working in uh, business together? Yeah, uh, well I think when I was 16 um, I left school. Um, I met Sarah. Um, I had, it was my wife, I had unpaid jobs um, or really low paid jobs, was struggling um, and then we decided to have a baby um, so I thought right, we need to we need some income so I went to university to do entrepreneurship management um, business studies um, and while I was there Eddie was also at university um, doing the same sort of entrepreneurship and business management wasn't mm. you? Um, and then we started an SEO company who was building websites for people um, and after that it grew, you went to Thailand didn't you? and it just grew into an Amazon business from there. Yeah, I was in Thailand for three months and to grow this part of the business and whilst I was there I got speaking to somebody who was absolutely killing it on Amazon. So I was like, what, what's this Amazon thing? And then we delved a little bit deeper and then while Andrew was based back in the UK we decided to buy some uh, Nerf guns and then just try and sell them and uh, it took off like a rocket mm -hmm. and it's grew from there. So you started with Amazon? Yes, we started on Amazon buying and selling just toys to be, to be honest, to be yeah, starting. In 2014, wasn't it? Yeah, and yeah. then we slowly grew. Your wife came on board with us a few months into it, and then we took on your stepson. Yeah, so a family affair. Yeah, <laughs> and then it just kind of grew, and now we've got maybe a team of 18 to 20 people now. So. Yeah. All family? Distant cousins? No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's about seven or eight family. Yeah. And the rest are like BAs and just general staff at work in the warehouse that we own. Yeah, so it's getting there. How does that relationship work, owning a business but also being family members? I think it's amazing. Yeah. It's, you've got the trust straight away. Um, I'm good at some points, Eddie's good at other points, but we don't actually tell each other. We just know, oh, you're better at that, so he just does it automatically. I'm better at certain things. I just do it automatically. Yeah. They just bounce, don't they? Yeah, I think we work really well together. Like, like Rand says, we do have our own strengths, and uh, yeah, like we don't. It's like we're very chilled out as well. So there's no real friction yeah. or anything. No arguments. Yeah. yeah, it's rare for siblings. Yeah, it is rare. Everybody we speak to is like, "Wow, you can't be working together." <laughs> <laughs> so, what are the different strengths that you both bring to the company? Uh, I think I've got a buying background. I used to be a buyer for a wholesaler. Um, so I've got that experience, so I'm better at probably finding the products, or was before we had staff to do it for us. Mm. Um, Eddie's more st strategic. Yeah, I, I work on systems and, gro and growth strategies yeah. from there. And how to take us away from the equation yeah. and then grow elsewhere. And we're focused on working more on the business rather than in the business. What kind of systems have you put in place that helped you get there? It's a good question. Um, yeah, well, we started off getting sources who would then find the products for us because we was doing everything to, to start with. We was doing the boxing, the shipping, the finding the products. So the first step was to remove ourselves more from the sourcing. So we got VAs in, which are really cheap to hire. And then after that, your wife came aboard. She was doing the sh uh, packing and shipping. And then we created systems to get our own processes in a warehouse to do it for us. And then we got your wife to do the buying, the buying yeah. so then I removed that part of the equation. And now we've got VAs who do things like removing negative feedback or customer service. Essentially, we're almost out of the equation. Yeah. Oh, you've is, actually just moved away from the warehouse. Yeah, I'm not even in the warehouse at all anymore. So. And I won't be in on the 29th of this month, I'm going as yeah. well. So yeah, exactly. So, so it's going in the right direction. So it'll just be pure autopilot from three weeks away. Mm. So when you guys are completely really, um, completely <coughs> removed, are you going to start a new business then or invest in this one more? Yeah, we're, we're focusing on a uh, private label. So we're using an uh, amazing selling machine to, uh, to grow that. And it, we've got to a decent level already. Level already. It's just continuing to grow. Yeah. And then also we just started robertsonsonline.com. Yeah. Um, at the minute it's promoting just the course for amazing.com, uh, but it will have Type things added to it over the time, like anything to do with positive attitude, mindset, growth. Maybe some case studies of different business models was yeah. pursuing. That's awesome. You guys said that you started with um, toys. Is that still where you're going with? We do toys a lot, yeah. We're about 50% toys at yeah. the minute. Um, I mean, when we first started, it was 100% toys. Yeah. So we've re we wanted to reduce the pressure just on the one category because it was like a single point of failure. 
and now we do every category dozens of categories yeah. yeah how do you select a category that you think is going to work we <coughs> looked on some data to suggest show us which one was the biggest categories in amazon uh, and really we just picked from there so it was home and kitchen we saw was like yeah. ridiculously big yeah. so then we delved into there and then health personal care beauty because our, our mum and aunt do the business as well separately and they're absolutely killing it in beauty. And they just do just beauty. Yeah, they? they just do just beauty. So we was asking them about that. And then we've delved into beauty quite big now. How do you balance all those different products in different categories? <laughs> systems. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's what Without the systems, we would, we would it'd just be a minefield. We tried winging it, and uh, it gets you to a certain level, and then it just becomes too confusing. You can't, you can't sustain it. Staff, help, and systems. That's all you can do. Mm. And a warehouse. <laughs> Without a warehouse, we, we was previously in my house, <laughs> and my wife chucked me out because we was in the kitchen, we was in the bedrooms, the living room, and then we had to just get somewhere bigger. Yes. At what point did you guys bring VAs into it? What was that hiring process like? It, it was quite simple, really. We started to look on, there's a website called, it was Odesk, but now it's changed to Upwork, uh, and I had a few failed experiments on there. Just more, I didn't know what I was doing, to be honest. We have a friend in the US and he has a website specifically for trained VAs. And then it was effortless really. Yeah, yeah. We just had to. We've already trained up to do what we want. We yeah. just pay a, like a, a one-off fee and then we pay the wages every month. Mm. And then they help, they deliver us 10 products a day. That's wonderful. So yeah. it helps relieve the pressure off yeah, you guys then. Good. Absolutely. Yeah, it really does help. And uh, once, basically it's just scale. The more VAs you have, the more offers you'll get. And then therefore the faster you can grow. So the VAs, you said, help with your systems. How do they help with uh, buying and selling with your specialty in the business? Uh, they don't. They search. We give them, each VA has a set, a set category. So one will look for toys, one will look for home products, one will look for groceries. Uh, we've got all those covered, and every day they all send us all their finds on a spreadsheet. Then we have a, a separate VA that goes through all the products, all the finds, and they put it green if it's good, red if it's no good. And all the green one goes to another spreadsheet, and then the, that's the buy spreadsheet where my wife purchases the products for us, sends them to the warehouse, and then our staff at the warehouse prep and send to Amazon. Mm. And I personally, I look through anything. I look more high-end products, so anything selling over £100, $150, because then it makes more profit for us. Can um, you expand on what some of those attributes are that qualify as a good product or maybe not a safe bet? Um, it has to be constantly the same price for at least two months on Amazon. Um, we try to stay away from the products that Amazon sell itself um, because Amazon can always undercut you. Um, and th if it sells more than three or four a month, then it's a good product to us. The, the, pr the selling price must be at least double the buy price, yeah. which is then that usually signifies it's probably decent profit margins. So. Do you guys consider your brand in all of this? Like what your brand is moving towards with different categories and different products? We do private label side. That's, um, yeah, that the brand comes into play more with the private label yeah. side. With the retail arbitrage academy side, we, we sell any brands. Nerf, Hasbro, Barbie dolls, Mattel, anything. Anything that makes money. Yeah. <laughs> What's the difference between the retail side of it versus selling on Amazon? How do those fit together? Um, as in buying from retail stores, do you mean? Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's really funny because there's some offers on stores that people say, oh, it's 50% off so you can get some really good deals. But then there's other things that aren't even on offer, but they're just selling at such a high price on Amazon. So you can find some really good gems that are not even on any offers, so you wouldn't find them by looking in discount. You've just found those toothbrushes. Yeah, they won't. They want, there's just a normal retail price and they were selling on Amazon for double. So And you saw how many did you buy and so <laughs> I bought at the shop. I bought as many as I could. <laughs> I spent all my money on that one product and they sold within a week. Yeah, they sold so, fast. They're selling two hundred thousand pounds worth a, a month. So I just bought a week's worth because that's all they had in store. Mm. So if someone wants to get into retail arbitrage rather than finding a private supplier, yeah. how would they start doing that? Go to your traditional stores online that you shop at, Toys R Us, if you've got a child, Disney store. Mm. Um, if you have groceries, go to Walmart, look for candy, um, yeah. 
anything. Can M and M's sell really well? You can buy for cents and then sell for dollars in America. Just just go where you're used to. Yeah, I think everyone looks for a good deal, don't they? Yeah, I think a good starting tip. What we've found from speaking to people on the course is we recommended toys and games because it's an evergreen kind of niche. But people are saying they're not passionate about looking for toys and games, where some people are very passionate about beauty, like our mum. So she'll just look all day for beauty products and she loves it. It's like, a, it's like fun for her. Yeah. Whereas to us, that would be a nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I'd say, yeah, pick where you're passionate. So who had the passion that picked Nerf guns the first time? I think it's a boy thing. Yeah. I think, I think like, every boy has <laughs> yeah. a child has a Nerf gun. It's a good question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I, I've got a little boy, so I, I love toys anyway, just playing with him. Mm. Um, yeah, you know he, more he about the toy side. Yeah, I watch the children's programmes every morning. Whatever he was watching, it must be popular, so now I just go source those products. Yeah. It's nice you guys get an insider on what's working because you have <laughs> yeah. the kids. Yeah. That's it, yeah, you know what's coming out before it's even coming out. Yeah. Like Shopkins and Yeah, I have to that. buy them. That's great. So how would people research um, different maybe upcoming uh, trends in toys or in their category? Yeah, that is a good question. I'd say look at um, upcoming films like are great for like toys and games because the Disney stores like, do a fantastic job of promoting. So there was that, the Star Wars is a huge brand anyway, but when that came out, even before the film was released, some of those toys were just <laughs> selling hundreds a day. So it was ridiculous. And, and you know, the Star Wars films got a a new film coming out every year for the next five years so you know that product's going to last yeah. a long time so the business is going to last at least five years just for that Star Wars toys yeah it's ridiculous and it's going to get bigger and bigger um, and also yeah we just look at, look for trends like Google have a trends feature there where you can look at overall trends uh, if movies are coming out or what not so is that something that you guys do or is that a VA task do you think that's a VA task. Yeah. <laughs> every, yeah. every task is a VA yeah. task. <laughs> <laughs> How do you guys determine what is something that you want to maintain control of in the business before giving it to a VA? Yeah, we, we need to make sure that we have it written out in, a, in our operating procedure before it's ever released to anybody. And therefore, it's a cheat sheet, so anybody should be able to, to yeah. follow it. And we'll always keep in house like the financial side. Yes. All the important things that only me, Eddie, yeah. or a family member could deal with. Anything else that can be outsourced will be outsourced. Yeah, we want to get to the stage where it is. We're only doing what only we can do. That would be the strategic kind of thing. Yeah. How do you think that your guys' relationship with each other and with your family members has changed since going into this business together? I think it's grew yeah, stronger. I think we're be before we saw each other, maybe a week, say Eddie was living at my mum's, um, and I'd come down from my house at the weekend just to see him, and he'd be with his friends. But then now it's six days a week we see each other, don't we? And it's just grew the relationship, well, better than yeah, it ever was. It has, yeah, we were, we were already close, but it's got a lot closer. Like, be like my best friend, kind yeah. of. So it's good. It's really cute. <laughs> <laughs> and how has your lifestyle changed since doing retail arbitrage and moving on to selling on Amazon? Mine, personally, has mm. changed completely. I've gone from not being able to afford a holiday to going on holiday whenever I want. Uh, not have, owning a house to owning a house, warehouse, cars, anything, mm. and time. I think time's the biggest thing. Yeah, time is huge. if I want time with my children and my family, I just don't go to work, I just have time. I remember you saying when we first started, one of your big goals was to take your son to, to school, school every day. And that, that's, that's a pretty yeah. cool I've thing. I've done it every day, but apart from today. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys so much for your time and for letting us steal some of your time away. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.